So I'm Mark McKenzie. Um, I'm from Nelson. I was a musician in Christchurch. I used to be in the army also when I was uh, growing up. And I, I guess I call it the Midas touch. Everything I, I did, I did really well. I did really, really hard out and succeeded at most things that I did when I put my mind to things. Properties, I invested in properties in Christchurch and um, was building a nest egg at the same time, enjoying my life. I didn't really have any real concept of what God was other than I knew, I knew there was something there. And I had, a, I guess, a new age version of what God was. And I had a relationship, a long-term relationship that broke up and devastated me. It was six years, she was my fiance, and it happened within a few months of the Christchurch earthquakes. So my whole world just crumbled at that moment. So everything I thought was real in life and important in life, as far as I was concerned, was gone. And so when that broke, I decided I'm gonna live my life exactly how I want to. I decided to make a pact um, with myself that I was gonna commit suicide, but it was gonna be in a year. But um, it's because life was so bad. It was so, um, I was so broken. All the things I believed in life going up to that moment were basically, um, that foundation was gone. And I decided at that moment, well, I'm gonna live life for me now. I'm, I'm now the God of me. And um, I'm not gonna tolerate anyone walking over me. I'm, I'm gonna call things how they are. I'm not gonna be nasty, but I'm gonna, if I see something I don't, I don't agree with, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say so. And I quite liked this person I became within this year. I noticed life changed. I noticed girls were really attracted to me. So a year went by and of course I didn't wanna do anything about that pact. I just decided to carry on living. I began living a worldly life. So all the things that social media says were awesome and that you hear growing up are awesome. You know, lots of different girls, drinking, you know, they're all awesome. Drugs, they're awesome, that sort of thing. I'd do those things and then not I'd be empty at the end of them and then think, well, maybe I'm just not doing it right. I'm not doing enough of it. And so I continued that process for probably a good four or five years. I met uh, who is now my wife as when I came here to live in Nelson. I was still thinking the same way. But, uh, she was born and raised a Christian, Christian home, Christian beliefs, but she had also been shaken with what had happened in her life. So we met at a very similar time. And she introduced me to this idea of God that I hadn't seen before. And she started going to church and would talk about what was going on in church. And I was really encouraging, like, yeah, that's awesome. You do what you do you. This is really good for you, then that's awesome. In the meantime, I was suffering from depression. Um, I think things had just become too much. And eventually I was seeking things online. And so I noticed I came across apologetics. So this, the, intelligent part of me always had an issue with Christianity. And so I, apologetics was for me an awesome way of understanding, like, oh wow, these things were real and that's a really intelligent argument against that issue I have with, with Christianity. And then also I decided I wanted to, to marry Nikita, my wife, uh, my wife now. She said to me, what do you think about um, our pastors coming and just having a little chat about what marriage is? So they would come and meet with us every Thursday and then I would hit them with questions and they would, you know, come back with stuff and I could feel myself really changing. The moment that things changed, I'd still struggled financially. There were still issues with my properties in Christchurch. There was EQC things going on. There was taxes that needed to be paid. It was a financial thing that was really holding me down. And I had had it to the point where I decided one day to say to God, and it, this was basically my prayer. God, if you're real, take this financial burden from me. So the specific financial burden I had was, there was a, an amount of money I needed to fix one of the houses so that the tenants could carry on. And it, I didn't have that money. And it was a figure, of, let's say it was eight and a half thousand dollars. And I just didn't have eight and a half thousand dollars. So I prayed that prayer and I didn't think much of it. And um, a few days went by, a few days went by and um, I went to open my emails, which was a thing I hated to do because every time there was an email from my property manager, it was usually asking for some money, asking for, uh, there was an issue with a tenant. It was always negative. 
So I mustered up the courage to actually open this email and not just stick my head in the sand. And uh, it came up and it said, the tenants from a previous problem that I'd had, um, they decided to pay their amount in full. So the tenants I, were, I had years ago had destroyed the house, were ordered to pay it back. But I knew that was the thing, the difference was. For me, I knew God was saying, I hear you and I see you. And, and I want you to be okay. And uh, for me, that was my first realization that God was real. I knew the first thing I wanted to do I, I, after I just sat in shock was to go upstairs. I was in my studio to go upstairs to my then girlfriend still at that stage. And she was listening to worship music and the song was Yes and Amen. Um, and I came up and stood there and I, I said, you're not gonna believe it, this just happened. And she cried. She said, that's God. And I said, I know. And that was the very first time that I'd ever said, I'd actually admitted that God was real and that he was working in my life. God opened my heart with a crack. And that's all he needed to slither in my heart and started penetrating and just, just doing it gently because he, he knew where I was at and he just came to where I was at and met me where I was at and has been walking along in that journey ever since. So how I was living before was on the outside pretty impressive and I had everything that people wanted. It, the, it looked fantastic, um, but my heart was really quite broken. I'd lost something, a purity that I used to have when I was young as time had gone on and each thing that I was doing that I now see as, as, as sin, the, the sin was stealing who I used to be. And when I decided to take my own life and then live the life from then on, that, I, that was, I was the God of me. There was no other God, I was the God. Um, going from that moment to the moment where I realized that God heard me, <laughs> it always gets me, when God heard me and I knew he was real, at that very moment, he filled something that I didn't even know I had missing. And the moment he filled that because he acknowledged that he did love me and he did see me, life was never going to be the same. That's not gone away. It's been two and a half, three years since that moment. So that's never gone. Life's gone up and down, things have happened, but that, that feeling that he knows who I am is never gone. And now it's up to me to build that relationship with him because uh, he can't wait to hear from me and hang out with me. And when God sees you like that, the God of the universe who created you sees you. And um, the recognition of that, it's, it can't be described because <laughs> nothing else matters. <laughs> At that moment, everything you've ever done, you just feel like he's so proud of you. He loves you so much, he took his time to come and rescue you and let you know, tap you on the shoulder, hey, I'm here. But when the God of the universe loves you, what can be better than that? <laughs>